Hey, thank you for joining me for part two of the apparitions of Our Lady, the Virgin of Revelation, as she identified herself at the three fountains, Tre Fontane in Rome. I've been at my peril trying to work out what to do with so much information, so much of a, an astounding message of prophecies, and for that man Bruno, having over 60 or 70 prophecies, premonitions, combined by apparitions, even prophetic dreams. But there's three that I want to highlight specifically in this video, with a very much condensed version of a few others highlighted better in the book, narrowing it down to the points. And also at the end of this video, I really go off on a tangent, given the hope of why it's good to be alive now, and for all the God incidences that's happening in the world and in the church at this very moment in time, connecting the Marian apparitions and the prophecies, connecting certain prophecies of mystics such as Mary Julie Jehenny and Anne Catherine Emmerich, all fitting the big jigsaw puzzle of that clearer image of God's plan. There are three specific dates highlighted to me inside the messages of Trefontani, where Our Lady undoubtedly is making it very subtle and very clear why the message of March 13th, why the message of December 31st, and of course the biggest message of all in that apparition originally was on April 12th. Now to give you a taste of what's to come, April 12th was also a great prophecy of Anne Catherine Emmerich. March 13th message and what it contains should highlight the fact of all that's happening under this papacy where Pope Francis was elected on March 13th. And then of course we have December 31st message in here. December 31st was the day that we lost Pope Emeritus Benedict. And what a conclusion of the times these things fit, the time of the prophesied two popes, Benedict passing, completing the four prophesied popes of Garib and Dal. And now we are all in the time of a great synod, coinciding perfectly with the 50th anniversary of the prophecy of Akita where Our Lady spoke to Sister Sasagawa, warning of great division and evil infiltration within the Church. I'm going to go further into this and highlight it more, but here's a quick blast of the certain messages I'm speaking about before I go into it all the more. December 31st, 1990. Our Lady says, False prophets seek with all means to poison souls, changing the doctrine of Jesus, my beloved Son, into satanic doctrines. They will remove the sacrifice of the cross that is repeating on the altars of the world. These poisoners will take away the means of salvation and they've already penetrated into the light of the church. We know too well how Pope Benedict XVI, even as Cardinal, Cardinal Ratzinger was very involved in the small trusted circle of John Paul II when it came to being the head of the Congregation of the Doctrine of the Faith, when it came to discerning the Marian apparitions of the past century especially. And as Pope, he definitely made the connections and tried to do more as being head of the church than he could have done previously. And we know the fact that how he's been, how he had to step down, keeping true to the image of the church, but so many things have came in the backgrounds, and even after his death, of really a division within the church, a civil war within the church, and how he was trying to wait it against all the enemies that have infiltrated it. He passed away on December 31st, just last year, the very last day, which was prophesied elsewhere that he would die last year. I don't believe for a second these dates are coincidental, and I'll explain more into that. But let's look at the one of March 13th quickly. Message of March 13th in the year 2000. My children, salvation is not bringing together all religions to make them a cluster of heresies and mistakes, but to convert them to the unity of love and faith. 
Now, what stood out for me upon reading that was March 13th, 2013, was the day Pope Francis was elected. And I've already covered in videos how between the announcement of Benedict's retiring, lightning strike the Vatican, then the meteors that landed in Russia, then later in Argentina, only then to have the Argentinian pontiff elected on March 13th, Pope Francis, since his election, has brought great confusion into the Catholic world. And although he may be misrepresented in many other things, it's very clear that the church as a whole is really seeing the influence of evil, the infiltration. And now as we approach the 50th anniversary of Akita, it's highlighted more than ever. But this message when it says, my children, salvation is not bringing together all religions to make them a cluster of heresies and mistakes. We're thinking the Abbey Adabi agreement, where the three different uh, faiths, the Abrahamic faiths, are all as one. It's where we've seen the scandal of the false idol worship of Pachamama. I think it's a deliberate, subtle time of knowing of the future where God's allowed this message to be revealed and the timing of December 31st when it comes to Pope Benedict XVI's death. They were the two prophesied two popes, Courtney and Catherine Emmerich, coincidentally coming at the time of list of St Malachy's list of popes, coincidentally coming at the last four popes after John the Twenty Third, according to Garabandal. I'm going to go further into this now in the video with reading a few more from the book and highlighting the real points that we should really grasp and realise the times we're living in. Let's get started. I've literally read this this morning. It's not too long, but as you can see I have some markers, I've got some highlights in the notes, and I want to just go through a few things that really stand out for me. The great connection with Pope Pius XII, having been foretold ten years prior that a man, Bruno, would appear to him, giving him the account of the apparition of Our Lady at Trefontani. The one thing in the, the book that highlights is that Pope Pacelli, as he's called here, Cardinal Pacelli, who became Pope Pius XII, he was consecrated as a bishop on the 13th of May, 1917. It was exactly the same day of the first apparition of Our Lady in Fatima. But May 13th is also a date later on concerning Pope John Paul II, who was shot on May 13th, 1981. It was also Pope Pius XII who later brought in the fourth Marian dogma, the Assumption of Our Blessed Mother into Heaven. John Paul II also has a great connection, even a more intense connection, to Trefontani than his predecessors. According to the book, ahead of every conclave, Bruno knew who would be elected Pope. On the 4th of June 1963, the day after the death of Pope John XXIII, Bruno wrote, Within 20 days there will be a new vicar. Among the candidates, Montini is the best. On the 8th of June he added, Paul V worked to organise the Vatican State politically. Now, a Paul VI is required to organise the church. On the 21st of June, Giovanni Battista Montini was elected and took the name Pope Paul VI. Bruno ended up meeting Pope Pius XII a couple of times. Originally, after the several interrogations and interviews regarding the apparition, it was July 22nd in 1947, Bruno was taken to the Vatican where he met the Pope, accompanied by three Jesuits. There was an oath taken to keep the revelation secret. Typical. <laughs> Bruno did state that the Pope wept upon hearing what Bruno had told him, and later it was revealed that Pius XII had revealed to Bruno that April 12th the Pope received a message directly from Our Lady of her appearance elsewhere in Rome. So this is highlighting the fact that the Pope himself was also having apparitions. At a later time, Bruno met the Pope again in a public gathering 
where Bruno fell on his knees crying and he gave the pontiff the very dagger that previously he had inscribed death to the Pope where he was going to assassinate the Pope with that particular dagger. Pius XII basically told him, well if you succeeded you would have only given the church another martyr and another Pope. <laughs> Bruno also foretold the attempt of St. Pope John Paul II's life on the 13th of May 1981. It was in October 1982 the Diocese of Rome erected an altar at the cave of the apparition site at Trefontane. This, was, this is a great story. This was due to Bruno receiving many premonitions of future events, including that of the assassination of the attempt against Pope John Paul II. Now listen to the dates. Bruno wrote a letter to the Pope in February of 1982 warning the Pope about an upcoming attempt in his life. This is a year after Pope John Paul II was already shot and he attributed that to Our Lady of Fatima as it was on the anniversary of May 13th, 1981. But now, February of 1982, he's warning the Pope again of another attempt. It was April 22nd, 1982, that he re then received, received a reply from the Vicariate of Rome advising that the Pope had his letter. A few weeks later in May, the Pope was in Fatima, thanking Our Lady for having saved his life in the previous year. After being shot... During this trip, a priest from the Pius X Society attacked the Pope with a, bay a bayonet and wounded him, but was stopped before he could kill him. Pope John Paul II ordered an altar to be erected at the cave and sent word to Bruno, advising he did so after that second attack. Bruno founded a catechetical association under the direction of Our Lady and devoted his life to teaching the truth to lapsed Catholics and non-Catholics alike. The apparition of April 12, 1947 was the first of many along with prophecies, messages, some contained in dreams, that he received periodically up until his death, which was on June 22, 2001. Here are some excerpts regarding the warnings against the clergy, the sins of the church, the infiltration of the church. Draw close to the heart of my son Jesus. Consecrate yourselves to the heart of a mother that mystically bleeds continually for you. Glorify God who is amongst you and flee from the things of the world. Vain shows, obscene books, all types of charms, falsehood and other evils like vanity and spiritism. These are the things that the evil devils use to persecute God's creatures. Evil powers that work in your hearts. Through a divine promise, Satan is freed for a period of time and he will light the fires of protest amongst men for the sanctification of saints. Through a divine promise, Satan is freed for a period of time. Again, that takes us back to Pope Leo XIII and his mystical experience, where in that experience, he stated that God granted Satan a certain time to test the church and humanity. The entire church will suffer a terrible trial to cleanse it of the carnality that has infiltrated its ministers particularly amongst the orders of poverty. There will be moral and spiritual trials. For a period of time indicated in the heavenly books, priests and the faithful will face a difficult trial in the world of the lost. They will have attacks hurled against them by whatever means is possible. False ideologies and false theologies. And what this book highlights to me as well, it's not things that are happening round about the middle of the 20th century between World War II finishing and the rise of the communism of Russia, which was prophesied back in Fatima. But it says here that during the days between the end of 1988 
and the start of 1999, the Virgin invited Bruno to reread the message of 1947 and write the phrases that struck him the most. And some of these phrases he offered further clarification. So the first one it goes on well, going on about charity and the fruits of love. But the second one, to continue with the theme about the infiltration and trials of the church, etc. He writes the point that stood out from here. The entire church will suffer a terrible trial to cleanse it of the carnality that has infiltrated its ministers, particularly amongst the orders of poverty. There will be moral and spiritual trials for a period of time indicated in the heavenly books. Priests and the faithful will face a difficult trial in the world of the lost. This evil will infiltrate the hearts, especially the hearts of my priestly sons. Those who profess it are few. They are hardened and do everything to discredit the three base points of salvation that I have already spoken of. The Eucharist, the Immaculate Virgin Mary and the Holy Father. These are the bases of the doctrine of salvation. And the third point he highlights, priests and the faithful will face a difficult trial in the world of the lost. They will have attacks hurled against them by whatever means is possible. False ideologies and false theologies. And there's a further emphasis on that. A chastisement will come unexpectedly from the East. They will receive the strength of persuasion as if they are gods and will be able to subject those who they call infidels. This will happen very soon. The year 1999 is the year of sorrow and the assaults of the enemy are strengthened by those that have power to exercise it. To escape the evil, they could exercise it but have not done so. Therefore, souls are overcome by the evil done by many of those who are protected by you because you prepare them for perdition and not salvation as you do not propose the truth but false heretic and ideological doctrines. These negate the true faith to defend the false faith that leads to perdition. Well, I can't recall much that happened in 1999, but the world did enter into a new millennium in the year 2000. And within that first year of a new millennium, a new century, 9-11 occurred in 2001 which opened up the world into instability like never before, where we've seen the so-called war on terror lasting all these decades till the present day. And now, with the continuous wars in the Middle East and afar, we're seeing biblical proportions of mass migration coming from Africa, coming from Syria, Libya, and any other country that's joining the Mediterranean, massing right through into Europe especially France and Italy and even England. Just this week, upon trying to get this video together and gaining a little bit more knowledge of these messages, nearly 7,000 migrants landed in Italy just a couple of days ago. In one day. That's not counting the rest going in, other, other, in any other countries. I get the fact that people are fleeing war. But not all these countries have got the same reason. And why now for the last few years and not for the last two decades is it happening now? There is a point of Christian charity for sure for people that are fleeing poverty, for fleeing war, that are suffering from hunger, that want a better way of life, to survive. We should be welcoming them in and helping them with Christian charity. But from what I'm noticing from people that don't show any signs of faith in their channel, some preppers, to those that are having Catholic channels, platforms, one thing, although they don't know of each other, I believe, they are speaking about the fact that all these mass migrations, these migrants, majority of them, are military-aged fighting men. There's hardly any women. There's hardly any children. I would never leave my wife or children behind in a place of war or a place of famine. 
The fact that I'm coming to another country, being putting up, not earning money, not having a chance anytime soon to get citizenship and make money to send back, why then would I leave them in that state and just save myself and get the government of another country to look after me? That doesn't make sense. And I believe more and more that in these past, this past month, being reawakened to things of, I've read years ago, such as Marie Julie Jehenny's prophecies about the Islamification of Europe, the attack that's coming over from the Muslims at the same time Russia comes in, we're seeing it. And then now this one speaking about the fact that those from the East calling us infidels. Something is going to spark it off and with the majority of prophecies already bringing in Russia to sweep over Europe and for then this attack in Islam into Europe concerning countries, especially that of Italy, the Vatican, France, England. This has been a repetition of the same warnings. I want to just highlight then the two dates that are standing out for me straight away. The main message was given on April 12th. And there are a couple of messages popping up on 31st of December. And even one message of March 13th. Now I don't claim to have any insight or premonition that these mean much, but... When you start noticing certain trends that heaven are obviously making obvious, such as October 13th, we'll get Leo XIII's mystical experience on October 13th, 1884. We have the miracle of Fatima on October 13th, 1917. And then on October 13th again, 1973, we have the major prophecy of Akita, which is coming up next month of this recording. Cardinal against Cardinal, Bishop against Bishop. Those who have got devotion to Our Lady will be despised by their confreres. We're speaking of chastisement. A lot of stuff's happening in the world that people are focusing on that. But the April 12th message that is clearly highlighting infiltration of the church, the sins within the clergy and bringing about false ecumenical doctrines and ideologies and theologies which is weakening the papacy, weakening the church itself and now with everything that's going to happen is to clear it out as it says in this book. But as soon as I saw the message in this given by Our Lady in that one-off major apparition, April 12, 1820 was Anne Catherine Emmerich's uh, message and it's as follows I had another vision of the great tribulation it seems to me that a concession was demanded from the clergy which could not be granted I saw many older priests especially one who wept bitterly a few younger ones were also weeping but others and the look worn among them readily did what was demanded it was as if people were splitting into two camps. That was April 12th, 1820. April 12th, 2020, exactly 200 years to the date, the churches were closed due to the lockdowns. And it wasn't just any day, it was Easter Sunday, the greatest day of the Catholic calendar, the Christian calendar. And I don't believe this was just about a consensus to church to shut the, the churches and then that's where split the church. No, I've always said the COVID times, the lockdowns, everything we saw happening, especially concerning the church as well, there were precursors of what's still to come. And in April 12th, in this grave message, highlighting very bluntly where the church is going wrong and what we need to do to avert it all. April 12th with Anne Catherine Emmerich, April 12th, 200 years later in 2020, Easter Sunday. These are deliberate, just like October 13th, just like May 13th, the first apparition of Our Lady in Fatima. Bocelli was ordained bishop on this May 13th, 1917, the very same day, he would later become Pope Pius XII. We met Bruno 
and it was all to do with his time of papacy, bringing in the, the Marian dogma of the Assumption. Then May 13th was also when Pope John Paul II was shot. These are deliberate things from heaven, I believe, and having a slightly analytical mind, this stuff stands out for me. May 13th, 1820, the month after Anne Catherine Emmerich's uh, message of April 12th, we have May 13th, 1820, where she says, I saw also the relationship between the two popes. I saw how baleful would be the consequences of this false church. I saw increase in size. Heretics of every kind came into the city of Rome. The local clergy grew lukewarm and I saw a great darkness. I'm not going to go on further with Anne Catherine Emmerich. I've done a, a very detailed video in the past connecting her to Marian apparitions already. And this one is just another piece of the jigsaw to see the the, the more clear plan that's been there all along, which Our Lady's been sent by God, going back to La Salette, going through the certain mystics of Anne Catherine Emmerich, Marie Julie Jeheni and others, going to the Marian apparitions from uh, Fatima, Garabandal, Akita, and yes, even Medjugorje. Right now, Akita is taking such prominence because in the next couple of weeks from this day of recording, we're entering that 50th anniversary of that 1973 message. October 13th, 1973, where she's warned us of the split again in the church, just like Anne Catherine Emmerich did back then. And right now, with the commencing of the Synod and Synodality, which I'll put my hand up, I haven't looked into it too much, but I've heard many many good bishops and priests speaking out of the warnings of where this may go into erroneous ways. When we read these messages of false ideologies and watering down of the faith and through the spirit of ecumenical uh, ways, ecumenism and everything else, we see that bringing in the, the idolatry of the Pachamama scandal where you're seeing the seat of Peter we're seeing cardinals and bishops and the Pope encircled round other people in the Vatican gardens and then later in the Vatican above the tomb of St. Peter worshipping false goddess, a false goddess, false worship inside the Vatican in the name of ecumenism. It's a way of trying to evangelise people in the Amazonian areas. Nah. It was a scandal that's never left many of us, and that is not the way you bring Jesus to people. And Our Lady's warning very much about this. She's telling us heaven is not liking the way that it's going about. And everything that she's repeated and repeated, it's just playing out in our times. There's absolutely no doubt about it. I can't get away from the, the clarity of not one, two, or five God incidences but dozens that are fight, are fitting all the time. There are dozens fitting all the time. And it is no surprise that this great synod prophesied in Garabandal in the 60s is coinciding with the 50th anniversary of Akita's prophecy, which is echoing this prophecy, which is echoing that of Fatima. For everything being said at the top of my head right now, for the sake of getting this video to you in time, there is no doubt in my mind that heaven is bringing these dates, the, this repeated warning of what's going to happen within the church, of what's going to happen around the world, specifically in Europe, at the behest of Islamic fundamentalists migrating over and Russia bringing in the Third World War. The massacre of the faithful, which Padre Pio says the, the, the blood of the martyrs will pay for the great miracle of Garabandal. So Garabandal speaks about this great time where God needs to step in when everything's at its worst. I think we know what that means. It'll be at the time it'll coincide with a great synod. Well, there's no greater synod we've had than this one that's underway right now. It's involved every church 
in the world to have a say. And it's no coincidence that this great synod is coinciding with October 13th, 2023, the 50th anniversary of that blunt, clear message of Our Lady in Akita. Cardinal against Cardinal, Bishop against Bishop, the devil will infiltrate even to the top ranks of the church. Fire will fall from the sky, wiping out a large part of humanity. Everything's coming at its worst. Coincidentally again, this is coming at the time where we've had our four popes prophesied of Garabandal after John the 23rd. We've had the prophesied time of the two popes. Why? It's not like they're spread out over ten years. These are dozens of coincidences coming together now. Now, all at the once. And this period is really going to show us everything. I really do believe that. I saw a recent uh, clip with Xavier Arial, who I think is absolutely fabulous, and I'm in contact with him to come on the channel. He says to another uh, host recently, highlighting La Salette, where Maxim spoke to the Pope, I believe it was, that all these things highlighted at La Salette could be averted. If people prayed more, it could be halted from the time late into the 20th century, but would occur within the first quarter of the 21st century. We're living in that quarter right now, people. 2025 will take us to that fulfilment of that quarter of time and look at everything I've just highlighted that's happening. But it's not to be afraid. I don't speak with fear. I don't speak with the knots in my stomach that I may once had years ago when I first stumbled across this stuff and persevered into reading more. That's all subsided. That's all gone. And I'd like to think it's because I'm doing what Our Lady's asked us to do. I'm praying every day. I'm wearing the sacramentals of the brown scapula, the miraculous medal, the St. Benedict cross, fully blessed and exercised. I have holy water in the house. I've consecrated the house. I'm going to Mass as often as I can in my days off work, and definitely every Sunday. I'm going to monthly confession, at least once a month. I'm praying the rosary. I'm doing everything I can to live in God's divine will. Because that is the promise that I've no doubt is coming. That era of peace. Satan's had his time, he's had his chance, and he's going to get his head kicked in with Our Lady. And we're going to help him. So we are the ones that will have less confusion when these events occur. We were the ones that will be able to endure more because we are built on firm foundations of faith, sticking to the true doctrines of the church. And if they bring out falsehoods against the doctrine of marriage and family, which Lucia of Fatima says would be the decisive final battle, if they bring out what Our Lady says here, a false creed, which echoes the warning of Anne Catherine Emmerich, where it will all be brought in as one falsehoods, false doctrines, the true presence of the Eucharist will even be taken away in teaching of the Catholic Church itself. The minority will hold on to the truth and please God we are part of that minority. It's a great time to be alive because like the 12 men that Jesus picked who brought down the Roman Empire through preaching the good news, the gospel, accompanied by the Holy Spirit, in evangelization, charisms and miracles, we the baptized have also got that same Holy Spirit and we are aware of the signs of the times. And we're going out there, in a good Scottish fashion, we're going to give it laldy. Stick to what Our Lady's told us to do through the many apparitions, the praying, the fasting, confession, keeping ourselves right, living a good holy life with the Lord. And when things come to pass, we are with them and we are ready. As always, dear friends, it's great times to be alive. Hold on to the hope. Hold on to the excitement that God's stepping in like never before. And we have been deliberately made aware of this. We have been deliberately created by him for now. Not in the past, not for the future, but we are now in this great chapter 
of the new era of peace that's to soon come in our lifetime. Please spread this message and spread the video. Share it to everyone in your WhatsApp, your Facebooks, your social media. Share it to everyone. Get it out there while there's still time. Hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell icon for the more videos to come. God bless.